You know, like people be like, oh, I'm not going to say what I really want because um, if I do, then they'll think this or that or They're not, they're not going to like me. They're not going to want to go on date number gonna, two. I'm not going to, you know, share my non-negotiables because they might not um, meet them. So I, I might not see them again. So why, why do you want to see them again if they don't meet your non-negotiables? I think you're at, a, you're at an amazing point in your life because... Things are aligned for you in a way where you know what you want, what you don't want, what you will tolerate, you what clarity. you won't. There's, there's a, again, you were saying it earlier, peace. And, and I love that because it's so important. Because at the end of the day, you know, the, the outside world is loud and things are chaotic. But at the end of the day, you have, there has to be an inner peace. You have to be able to come back to yourself and be like, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace. I'm whole. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm good. Regardless of how outside forces try I'm to aware. shift you. I'm aware. Exactly. You got to be... Yeah, solid. Don't get me wrong. There's been a couple of times where I've been like, yo. No, of course. Yo, like this sure. connection, I really want to throw it out the window, all the work that I've done, sell myself short because you're really hot <laughs> and I can feel it. But then it's like, Alba, what are you here to create? Right. What are you here to create? Wow. You know? You know what it is to have that kind of like inner strength to like combat? Because emotions are, are, it's hard to fight. You know, a lot of people, they just act on emotion and then they, when they think about it, they're like, Should have never done that. But yeah. so you're to be in tune enough to say, hey. You have convictions and, and, and the purpose, really. You know, and that I think that's kind of what, what it boils down to. Yeah, and the, I think the power is in the pause. So right before you make a decision, there's a pause. So if you can connect there to your intention, and if you're building a life of intention, which is different from just going about your life. Mm. So you can go about your life and... Do whatever because you feel like doing it, because you thought it was a good idea, even it wasn't giving you the results that you were looking for. So why are you even doing that? You know, if I say I want this type of relationship, am I committed to becoming the person that has that type of relationship happen? You know, if I want to commit a partnership or if I want somebody that meets this, uh, these standards in my life that is trust, safety, safety, respect, Um, connection, this, this, and that. Does the person that goes to the bar and gets wasted and hook up gets that type of relationship? No. No. Right. So it's like, it's about being, um, yeah, just like being in integrity and being, being consistent with right. what you say you want. That's it. If you say you want that, put in the work. I love that. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's important aspect of life. It's not easy to get there and it's not easy to stay there either, you know, but to you so it can get a little lonely uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know but i've um i'm always like raising the bar so i'm like oh i'm raising the bar let's see who shows up yeah. and then it's like a couple of things and i'm like let me raise the bar oh a little goodness. bit more and oh see you goodness. know so i invite people like for example oh you like me this is what this is yeah. you can find me here so if you do that then we'll see what happens but if you don't i'm really It's not because you're not worthy. Yeah. It's because I'm really busy creating something, you know. How, how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 27. You're 27. Oh, wow. You have so much wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> you're a well of knowledge. Um, <laughs> wisdom. You, you said you said divorced. Are you comfortable talking about that? Is that something that you... We can talk about it. We might have it edited out. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can talk about whatever, it. Whatever you're, just kidding. whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, what happened? Well, But how long was the marriage for? First of all, okay, when did, is, how old were you when you got married? I married at 22. Wow. I know. Okay. I'm always, first, I had just migrated to this country. Okay. Uh, so I came from there to here. My family was breaking apart. I couldn't practice my, my career. Like, it was just like, nothing was working out, yeah. you know? So I got on Tinder. In <laughs> 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 my first Tinder date, I married. Really? The <laughs> yes. first one? Wait, what? I know. I know. Terrible. Wow. Well, anyway, I married the wrong person. Okay. But there's no wrong. I mean, I just didn't marry the person that I was meant to be with for a long time. I like that. But before you continue, look how easy <laughs> that perspective. No, I'm serious. That change of perspective. It's not the wrong person. It's just the person. What was that you said? That, I, it's just you not meant the to person be. that I was meant to be with for, I mean, for obvious reasons. A change of perspective now changes it from... I made a mistake too. 
oh, it just, it wasn't the right time. And this is just part of it. So for anyone listening here, this is a good example of how you should start viewing things. Please proceed. Honestly, then I look back and I'm like, it was perfect. It could have not been more perfect because it broke me to the core. And if I wouldn't have been broken apart the way I was, I would have not find the light within me. You know, it was Exhibit like, a. it was like, oh, you think you're dying? No, girl, this is a rebirth. You actually, rebirth. you're rebirthing, it. you know? So it's like, oh, the, the pain of death, of loss, of sorrow, of, of grief. And what's on the other side of that? If you can really detach from the label of this is a bad experience, it's actually growth. Is resilience, is understanding. There's wisdom on on grief when you when you understand that it's meant for your growth. <sighs> think of think of a I'm sorry, think no, of no. like a little caterpillar crawling around, little ugly motherfucker. <laughs> They're eating little plants, and then it you just see it go into its cocoon. And then what comes out on the other side? And they think they died. Imagine being in that, in that chrysalis. You're like... But a beautiful dead? butterfly comes on the other side. And that is what rebirth is. When sometimes you feel like things are kind of keeping you tight. You don't know what to do. It's probably just part of the process that you got to go through to then learn and grow from. Right? There, there's, there's a, I, I truly believe there's a purpose in anything. And everything... Like it's a cliche thing. Everything happens for a reason. It is a cliche. But cliches tend to be accurate. And so <laughs> that's, reason that, why, that's why they're cliche. Like a stereotype. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, think about all the lives that you've impacted now that you're on the other side. If you would have stayed in that marriage, who knows? You probably wouldn't be the person you are today. Not, not who knows. You wouldn't be the person you are today. <laughs> you wouldn't be on this, this podcast. And all the people's lives that you're affecting, you had to go through it in order to learn from it or in order to kind of repurpose your life. And so... I'm a firm believer of whatever you're going through at the moment. It sounds like there's no coming back from it, but there's always an, the other side. And it's uh, once we're there, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful journey, and uh, going through it, man, it's 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 a uh, it's a it's a hard battle, but one that needs to be fought a lot of times. What are some like daily practices that you do in order to um to remind yourself of what your mission is, of what you're trying to create? Do you ever have any challenges that get thrown your way that kind of you know, throw you off your course. Of course. So what do you kind of do every day to, to keep you there? And then, you know, how do you kind of deal with those obstacles? Well, I see obstacles as opportunities. Mm. So the opportunity to see what is flowing and what is not flowing. And what is this trying to tell me? Maybe. You, you probably get that? if you have an, a big, like if you have an obstacle and then you try and then you pass through it, Okay, you were meant to learn from that. But if you try and you try and you try and you try and it's just not working, that's me. That you're just stubborn, you know. It's like go on another route, dude. Like you know, we have our friends. Uh, <laughs> go on another route. That's something. True. Yeah. Then yeah, we have a friend that that you reminded me of. That's like that. <laughs> yeah. That no. True. Listen, that's that's guaranteeing a life of suffering. So if you don't know how to flow with life, you know, it they it throws you a curveball, and you're like, you know, you can. Can kind of, or you can, <laughs> you know, True. or you can like get a bat and like, yes, and you, swing at it. You exactly. So for me, it's more like one of my daily practices is witnessing life, right? So I'm just I witness, observing. I observe. I love to wake up in the morning, and I'm in a very grounded place. So I live in a ground level. I have a like a kind of like a lake behind my place, and. There's a plot of land back. So it's like, it doesn't even look like I'm in a city, you know? So for me, connecting with nature and understanding, like, trying to get in the mind of a bird. And I see the bird, I'm like, look at that bird. Not worrying about <laughs> dating. Not worrying about <laughs> shit, just being yeah, a bird. Not worrying, <laughs> not worrying about bills, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, so then yeah. I'm like, can I just be like a bird for a second here? Yeah. You know, just like getting that mindset of like, I'm taken care of. I'm breathing, and as long as I'm breathing, I'm alive. Mm. Bringing intention to my breath and connecting to my breath, put my feet on the ground, feel the earth underneath, and, you know, just feel myself. That's my practice, just feeling myself. <laughs> it's so crazy how, like, simple it is. Because sometimes we get so lost, like, we look for distractions, like drinking, alcohol, drugs, and stuff like that. When sometimes if we just have a moment and absorbing like the sun absorbing the energy, the sounds, seeing the birds, yeah. the wind, the grass, soaking it all in, connecting to earth. It's like 
so healing in itself. It's it's, it's like really, everything you you need in order to to be whole and to be feeling that way is all within you. It's yeah. crazy that you don't you don't need anything. You don't need to be in a fancy apartment or a fancy house or anything like that or drive a, a nice car. It's all just within yourself. And so I think you're proving that uh, that point. I usually say it's not more rich the one who has more is more rich the one who needs less. Really? Mm. So it's the less you need, the more rich you are. You know. Mm. Oh. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I see what you, know you mean. mean. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does make sense. Yeah, because when when you have too. I don't know. It almost seems like it's overwhelming. It's almost like it's never enough because you need more. You need more. But when you don't have anything, you kind of appreciate what you have and you value the things you have. That's like that's richness. Oh, yeah. That's I for me. That's the value. Like that's a, one of the meanings of life is to value what you already have. If you don't value what you have because you're thinking of what you want, which is not what you need because you already have what you need. True. If you need it more, you would have more. You know, yeah. so people think, oh, the homeless person, uh, they don't have what they need. No, they have exactly what they need. And the rich person in their mansion with their Bentley, they also have what they need, you know. Mm -hmm. So every person gets exactly what they need, whether we like it or not. So the idea that we want something, that's not what you need. Because what you have is what you need. What you want keeps you away from what you have. So when you're not True. appreciative of what you have, then life can take it away from you because you're not valuing that. That's true. <laughs> because think about it. Like we've made it this far with what we have. Yeah. Like, Which is exactly what you need. We don't need much more. It would be nice to yeah. have a nice a nice crib and a yeah, nice car. Yeah. It would be nice. It would be nice. I <laughs> want that. But now that would pull me away from appreciating what, what I have, like family. Uh, good friends. Exactly. A job that I can't yeah. fucking can't stand. But you have <laughs> money. Man, I remember years ago my first kidding, car. Kidding. I love my job, by the way. <laughs> my first car I had a Scion TC. It was a 2007 Scion TC. I crashed it. It was in the in the shop for like a month, and I had no car. How did you do? I crashed it. A month? Yeah, that was in I the body shop. I crashed mine within a week. So. Yeah, exactly. So, but like you know, and I, and I, and I get in the car with you guys. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't like the car before. You know, I was like, oh, you know, I want to get a bigger car. This and this and this. And I was younger. And then I didn't have it for like a month. I took the bus to work. It was it was frustrating. Miami was it was oh, hot. It was frustrating. Man. And I get into the car after they called me. Hey, you can pick up the car. I get in there. Like, oh my god. And bro, I, I appreciate it. I've never appreciated a car so much. <laughs> it's like yeah, like I love you. This thing is all I ever need. And so and obviously that's just one out of many examples that you can put at. That's true. But it's you, once you drive, you you how often do you get in your car? You don't even think about it. Damn, I, I'm driving to work. Well, people don't have that luxury. So it's all that is a luxury in itself. So that kind of takes me back to what you were saying. Like, oh, an example. That's a good example. Yeah, no? Like, oh, I got yeah, into you that can car. You take it for granted. You take it for <sighs> granted. He's like, man, that car, it smelled the smell, and how it feels, how it drives. The smell. Man, what's up with you and your car, man? Why does it smell bad? No, no, no. It was <laughs> an old an, It was an old car. Yeah, I don't know. It was an old car. And like it, a protein bottle, I don't know, but dirty protein. No, street. no, no, no. It was, it was just an old car. But when I got it back, I was I've never been more so I've never been so grateful because I I had to experience what it was like to be without it, and so <laughs> you missed that shitty smell and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I missed it. it. I miss yeah. it. And so now, like I drive a my car is old too. Like my, now I have a new car, not new, but it's a different newer. car. <laughs> new war, and it's like oh, I wish I had a different car. But I t remind myself every time I get in it, it's still good. running. It's paid off. You know, whatever it has its things, but it's it's running, and I'm grateful for that. So. Yeah, again, you, what you were saying is like what an yeah. excellent perspective. I'm in such a good. I feel like we're yeah. all gonna have some good energy in here. Yeah, you know, and it, <laughs> it's, it's true. No, I, I think of that because this whole time, like I complain about stuff all the time, and sure. I'm like, it's like you're right. Like I have something. Like I'm grateful. Like no, I'm ungrateful apparently, but it's like I'm I'm so unappreciative of what I have when others don't. I should be more appreciative. Like, why? How am I allowing this to like slip over my head? You get to be more. I know, right, right. Like, it's, it's, but that's why. Like, it's, it's those little things that you need to remind yourself sometimes. Like what you just said, because you're like, oh, I fucking hate this car. I want a bigger car. All this yeah. stuff. You didn't have a car. I didn't have a car. Then and you're like, like, oh my god, all I want right now yeah. is my car back. I can't, like, I I'm can't so even appreciate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a lot of times is you you start to appreciate things when you when when you take things for granted and when you don't have them you're like oh man i missed this your health you don't, uh, you, you don't you even think till it's gone yeah, yeah till it's gone like our health we take it for granted the minute i'm sick i'm like man i miss being healthy i want to be healthy i want to be good 
We don't think about that. You get, a, you get a little cold. You get sick. COVID or anything. The only thing you want in your life, is like, be good. is to breathe. Yes. Like normally without yes. boogers. I want to eat something and taste it. <laughs> yes. You know, exactly. that's that's gratitude. And so, at the essence of it, you know, you're healthy. You're young. You know, like. It, it doesn't invalid when you were, let's say, you know, I wish I had a different job or it doesn't take away from that. Obviously, that's OK to, to want more, to, but at the end of the day, you have to remind yourself of what you have and what other people don't have, you know, and what you could lose. Be grateful for what you have. And if you want something else, how can you get something else if you're not grateful for what you already have? Yeah. You know? It's yeah, like so you you're saying, appreciate this it. is not enough. It's like when people get money and like they have these beliefs around money, but they're like... <laughs> They get paid and it's like, this is not enough. So if that was a person, you know, and like some every time they give you a hug instead of a kiss, you're like, that's not enough. You know, how mm. would they feel if you tell them constantly that's not enough? You but, know, so no, understanding that it's enough. It's exactly, it's exactly what you need. The, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's a, there was a study, I think, this was a couple of years ago where statistically speaking, once you make X amount of money, the, the money that goes off after that doesn't it's increase curve, the happiness. Yeah. <laughs> so I think back then it was maybe 70 grand. At it this used point. to be 70. It used to be then, probably yeah. now with inflation, it's probably, it's a little bit more, but people think more money is more happiness. It's to a certain degree that is accurate. But once you hit that, that fresh, how do you pronounce it? Threshold? Yeah. Yeah. Threshold. Yeah. Threshold. Uh, it doesn't go up gradually as income increases. So what does that, what does it tell you? It tells you that, there's only so much that money can bring happiness. Sure, it gives you freedom to do I certain things. I think that's things. what people... Freedom. But when you want to buy more stuff, you want to, oh, I want to get a new car. I want to get a bigger car. I want to make a bigger house at some point. Bro, that's... You can only sleep in so many bedrooms. You can only drive one car at a time, you know, so... It's not I, only that. Who's driving next to you? Exactly. Who's you know? the... Where are you who's driving living, to? Where are you who's driving living to? in that, in that, yeah. in that crib? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, you have you. a big crib just to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 big house and then empty inside you're empty because exactly. you don't really have a purpose or you don't feel happy. And it's it really grounds you, you know? Well, that's that. I wanted to go back to what she was saying. Um, One of my friends, I remember he was a photographer. Well, I don't even know if he's still doing photography. I think you might know who I'm talking sure. about. But there was a there was a point where he's like, man, I know my work is good, but I don't have like people just aren't following me. They're not following me. And at the time, this is when, like when we had first started the podcast. And now we're what over 11,000 on Instagram. Almost 12. Yeah, oh, almost 12. Who's counting? By, by the time, yeah, who's counting? <laughs> um, but whatever. We put in the work. Right. And we are so appreciative of where we are today because of the work of starting at zero. Wow. Wow, let's say him, he's like, I should have more followers, all this stuff. I'm like, you have like two, three thousand followers right now. There's someone with maybe a hundred who's looking at your stuff and saying, Wow, I wish my work looked like that. But now imagine if you did have like 10K overnight, you're just gonna be like, Oh, I got 10K. Yeah. Easy. Chilling. No big deal. But then like you're not now motivated for more because it's not like you worked hard. Like it's not like you really put in all that effort. Like you just, oh, I got it. And th but like what then comes from it? It's for me, it's like you have to put in the work. You have to show up. You have to commit. You have to be consistent with your efforts because then you're appreciative of all the things that you acquire, all the new things. If I'm not appreciative of what I have now, of what I'm doing, what my journey is, how am I then going to be appreciative of the long-term result when there's nothing that I'm, like there's no mission towards what we're doing? The juice is in the journey. The juice is in the journey. Put that on the t-shirt. Put <laughs> that on the wall. Yeah. Who's spray painted? The, the juice, juice is in the journey. You know, enjoy the journey. <sighs> Stop by. Smell the flower. Look at each other's eye. Enjoy a cup of coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy it. You know, enjoy the everyday life. Enjoy the moment because tomorrow is not granted. You know? We don't we don't know how long we're gonna be around. So as long as you're here, Tomorrow, dead. what? <laughs> what? No, no, because you're like, oh, you don't know how long you're gonna be around, which is true, 100. percent We don't know. You, don't, you, you know, every everybody has a last day. We don't know when that is gonna be. But, but it's yeah. gonna be one day. We all have that in common. One day. Hopefully that anytime soon. <laughs> we all. Nah, I ain't getting in the car with you. I'm making sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving in my own car home. No, <laughs> but no, you're right. It's it's so important to to uh, both of you guys. was like great points, and that's kind of where I, like the podcast. Like I'm so focused. I'm like driven. I want to grow. I want to this and that and that. And it's like sometimes you just gotta sit back and be like, and where where we are today versus where we are two years ago, recording some shitty ass fucking warehouse. Like, dude, I'm so proud of us. It wasn't a shitty warehouse. It wasn't, it was just the same. <laughs> it wasn't a shitty warehouse, but dude, whatever. 
It was a, but it wasn't here. Yeah, it wasn't here. And, uh, you know, hopefully in, in down the line, we won't be here either. We will have our own studio. We still love you guys, by the way. Yeah. Shout out HCAP <laughs> Studios. Uh, we would eventually want our own spot. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just you, the, what you were saying. Like, you got to enjoy the journey, the process, the connections, us sitting down here. Who knows? Down the line, we'll have you on again in a bigger studio, more professional, whatever. But with a crew, with a crew and people. a producer and yeah, stuff, and photographer and all that stuff. But for now, it's just us three, and I think right now we are exactly where we need to be. Exactly. And I'm Ooh, yeah, I like that. you guys yeah. feel that? Yeah, man. That energy yeah. Saturday morning. I'm Ooh. great. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for both of you guys to be here, for us to be here, and for, to have these these open discussions. I think it's so important to have them. And um, that's beautiful. Love for it. Sure. Coffee breakup is uh, tremendous. <laughs> No, because we yeah we just we just hit a milestone. You know, we hit ten thousand followers like a, two, a week ago or so. It took us two years, and now we're a little bit higher than that. And it's me. We're grateful for everybody who subscribes and who follows and who just tunes in. It just kind of reiterates where we are and what we're trying to do. But at the end of the day, we're obviously doing it also for ourselves. You know, um. To, but of the goal is to help people. Yes. And and just one person. If we can uh, impact one person, that's one person more. And uh, it's well, a tremendous uh, experience. Yeah, that's why we had you on. You know, we knew that you'd have a perspective that I think it aligned very well with our, with ours. I think so. I think you, you could agree. Yeah, yeah you right? definitely delivered. And, uh, but it's important because then it, it just shows because I have friends all the time. And so when I'm giving them advice, they think that I'm just being biased towards them. Mm -hmm. But then when I'm so in tune with my emotions and in tune with like how the simplicities are of 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 life, they think that, oh, but you don't understand, Chris, because I'm going through this. But it's like, there is other people who are just so in tune with the simplicities of it that it doesn't have to be difficult, but they think that, oh, because I'm their friend, they want to. It's like, no, this is why we want to bring people on. We need to talk to people who are willing to challenge that so they can see that, oh, well, maybe the way that I'm thinking, it is wrong. It's not my friend just trying to be my friend, like looking out for me. It's, oh, I'm actually making the mistakes because I'm choosing not to see the other side of it or other people's opinions. That's the beauty of what we're trying to accomplish here. And no. Thank you for being part of that. Thank you for being part of the journey. The juice is in the journey. <laughs> the juice is in the journey. <laughs> Got to write that down. Man, I, it sounds like we're wrapping it up, but I still wanted to, I want to ask them. You have yeah. a bunch of notes on that. Did you want to touch up on anything? Not really. No? No, I think we did. I did want to ask you, you know, one of, as we, as we close, how much time is it? We got a little bit of time left. A little bit. We got a little bit of juice left. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> the next year, we yeah. got some juice left. Yeah. Coming from the shoe, no problem. Okay, I want to ask you, because um, at the event, you used um, the, forgive me. Singing bowls. Singing yes, bowls. I want to get one, so, by the way. <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah, they're, they're pricey. But, but yeah. you use them as part of your healing as well? Yes, Um how did how did that come about? Mm -hmm. Well, you you said you did the ceremony. You can talk about that, and then just uh, I guess talk about how you still incorporate it. Right. So, um, <clears throat> sound healing or sound therapy is a beautiful tool. It's it's a tool to create the space and the environment for people to connect back to themselves. So, as I said at the beginning about holding space. What I do with sound healing is that energetically, vibrationally, and if you guys know vibration, you know that everything that exists has a vibration, right? Sure. So that's the um, that's a requirement to be in this planet, to be in this dimension, is you <laughs> have to vibrate. Yeah. You know, like you don't you might not see, but everything is vibrating, everything has a frequency. Mm -hmm. And that vibration makes a sound. So when I play these specific vibrations, these specific frequencies, your brain picks them up, your brain tries to mimic those frequencies and it, it gets you in a really deep state of relaxation really fast. So I usually say to my clients that meditation is the stairs going up through the stairs and sound healing is going up through the elevator. So basically uh, you can get through to theta or delta brain waves, which is where you can access your subconscious. You can get there within like 15, 20 minutes and you can start having a uh, flashback memories. You can have, you know, there, it's very interesting to see what, what type of experiences people have, but I usually play for an hour and that really it's, it's called a sound bath because you're basically immersed on the sounds. And what it does is that it creates a safe space, a safe container for you to express within yourself, to experience your emotions, your thoughts. And, um, and I usually say, I do the sound, you do the healing. 
Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. But do we need the sound to heal or is that just an aid to get us there faster? Um, like, it's a tool. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Do we need the sound to get there? Y'all want to start off. Uh, do we need the sound to get there or can we get there ourselves and the sound is just kind of helping us get there? Well, the sound balls are like a high-end tool to get there, but you can use your voice. You can really? use, yeah, like... Oh, you know that's a vibration. So people meditate. Yeah, or certain mantras, oh. or it's not the same when you say somebody "I love you" than when you when you tell them you suck. You know? <laughs> True. It's like so sound, words, vibration, all the impact, the energy, such a deep yeah. way. Yeah. So yeah. sound healing or the sound, these crystal uh, bowls, they're just so resonant that you don't have anywhere to go. You know, and you soak in them, yeah, you soak in sound for like an hour. Exactly. You, and that makes like, you have nowhere to go. So I tell people, hey, the 50, the first 15 minutes, ten, like they can be a little uncomfortable because you carry your vibration. And then I come in with this Choke. completely different vibration. And what they feel is like, what is happening? The brain doesn't understand, mm. you know? Until it's not, it like aligns itself. Exactly. So it takes a minute for it to like <laughs> match. It takes a minute. It takes a, a few minutes. And then they're like, they wake up and they're like, how many hours? Where am I? Yeah. They're That's like, how I felt. Yeah, yeah. When you would, you were. And that was a second. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was it. like in a big area. and stuff I, like I, I was just very open to like letting go because I really wanted the full experience. So maybe somebody else that were probably a little bit, no, I don't want to say reluctant, but maybe they just weren't reserved. comfortable, maybe more reserved. But I was like, yeah, fuck it. Like I want to yeah. get into that. I want to experience it. So immediately as soon I was like, like, I just felt everything so light. And then I looked over at Marvin. I'm like. How do you feel? And he was like, yeah, it's good. Does it have to be the, the, the sound board? Does it have to be a specific material in order to kind of encapsulate that sound? Or could it be, does it matter? Well, in India, Tibet, uh, Egypt, they used to... Well, vibrations. Vibrations. You feel that? You feel that? You feel that? You feel that? You yeah, feel that? I do. Yeah. Audience, they you feel that? <laughs> <laughs> um, in India, in Tibet, or um, in Egypt, they used to use different metals. So they're what they call Tibetan bowls. They're like oh. they're like more they're they're made of copper and these other metals. But more the the more we have evolved into the technology and the science behind sound, now there you know more more options when it comes to to crystal bowls. So I I personally use an amazing brand that. Um, uh, they don't pay me for this, by the way. <laughs> it's go jet. They go <laughs> alchemy crystal uh, tones. So yeah. they are extremely resonant uh, crystal balls. They're considered both uh, medical grade sound and uh, like instruments, like music instruments. So they're extremely sharp and resonant, and they do carry certain frequencies. Those are uh, melted with different gemstones. So that's why they're alchemy. So oh, they have wow. like gold and platinum and uh, I don't know, different stones like emerald and uh, smoky quartz. Like Ooh. it gets really fancy. So I'm really into it just because it has helped me. Specifically. To, yes. Yeah. And okay. uh, also to offer offer something that's, you know, that's a nice experience. It doesn't involve psychedelics, but you can have a psychedelic experience. True. Like True. while doing breath work and doing sound healing, you know, you release GMT in your lungs. You like, you can have really transcendental uh, experiences with, you know, without the need to necessarily consume anything. That's amazing. If somebody wants to try it before maybe purchasing, can they tr go on YouTube maybe and look up some sounds? Well, you did say that it was mentioned. a different effect. It's different when it's um, when it comes Live. through a speaker True. or um, or um, you know uh, headphones, headphones when it, instead of like when it's live. But you can still experience it because this. I mean, for, I have a Spotify song, you know, right. Spotify meditation that we'll you can access, drop it down here. and it's and it's masterized, so it's it has the vibration, the accordion vibration to the balls, and you can listen to it, and people are like, wow, it really takes me. But it's you know, of course, if you experience it in person, it's gonna be sure. deeper. But you know, it, that is a luxury. Do they have anything? Because uh, now I'm trying to think. Because um, you know how you have to like do it manually. You think there's like a machine? That probably you put the bowl on and then it spins the thing. You, you know how when you make a like a batter, you know how you put it in the thing. <laughs> sure. Imagine that, but for a bowl. But instead of the thing, it's like the stick that goes. Well, Alex, scratch that. We'll be a millionaire by the end of this episode. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a beautiful art 
in oh, I agree. doing you it know, yourself and like knowing what to play and when to play it and like immersing yourself into the experience because I'm sitting down, I'm awake while everybody's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. in their childhood trauma. Um, and they're like, oh my God, I went to this place. I, I, I imagine one, one time this lady told me, and I was, and I was at the room with her, the temperature dropped and it tends to happen that people get cold during sessions because they get so relaxed mm. that their blood pressure drops. So they get cold. Um, so the temperature dropped in the whole room. I felt cold. And then this lady, she had just gotten married and she told me, um, I went, I went to the moon and I met my son. Imagine yes. that. Like I met my future son. Like she met the, and I was like, I want some of that, yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's, it, it's a little bit, he's like, what? That's crazy. God, God. That's some crazy <laughs> shit. That's wild. That's crazy it gets, shit. so there's more to this world that we don't really see that we cannot perceive through our senses because our senses are so dominant. You right. know, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you touch, what you savor, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm so drunk with everything that it's been like, that I'm perceiving through my senses. That that's just a one percent, but like what's happening in the actually in the whole spectrum of existence is so broad. Below the surface, yeah. What? Uh, yeah, behind the, the veil, you know, you you just don't see it. You can't perceive it, but it's definitely there. So when I play these frequencies, for sure, there is a portal that opens, and you can access more than you could ever imagine because it goes beyond from the understanding. It's your subconscious, is spirituality, is everything from science to to spirit. So. It's an interesting experience. It's very woo woo, uh, but it, there, it, there's science behind it. I'm gonna dabble with it. The science of sound. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know it. It's there's so much out there, so much to take in. Uh, it's almost impossible to just kind of go over it in an episode. But you know, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you came on, and I'm glad it's like you. So challenging, you know, because yeah. now like it challenges everything you like existence, everything you've known like, until, right. up until this point. But I think that's 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 what life is all about. You want to challenge yourself. You want to try challenge right? the concepts and the ideas. Like and what's out there? Exactly. Yeah. That's where I live. I it's live out there. out there, and then I'm like, oh my god, how do I get back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to just realize how like I don't want to say how insignificant you are, but th th in the grand scheme of everything. Like I was on YouTube the other night and I was like, yeah, how big is, it? sometimes you just, on YouTube, down a rabbit hole, how big is the universe? And you like look at stuff up and it's like, man, that's insane. Like what's out there? <laughs> it's blunt. Yeah. yeah. yeah I like, think true. Do aliens insane. exist? Yeah. It's and, insane. And it should also be an inspiration to not take life so seriously. You know, it's like, that is true. listen, you are on a floating rock. On as a floating we, rock. We're going to die. Yeah. Like, we are gonna going die. to die. Can you just like devote yourself to be happy? Do what makes you happy. Just go do it. Live your life. Live your day. You know, you yeah. you love somebody. Go tell them. Mm. You know, apologize. Be there. Show up. Be human. That's the whole thing. You know, don't leave it for tomorrow, next week, and when you think you're ready. The moment is now. Everybody you have ever known will ever know. Everyone will be on this planet, and we all, at some point, will no longer be here. Exactly. And so... Why you, waste those times? Was, in the grand scheme of things, our let's say 70, 80 years that you live on this planet, insignificant to the grand scheme of how big, exactly. how old this planet is, how old the universe That's is. True. It's a spectrum of, of of existence. So let's do the most out of it. Let's make the most out of it. I agree. Of course, you leave a legacy. That was nice. Create a legacy. Leave a legacy of community, of love, of yeah. connection. Do the something. best you can. Do the best you can with what you have. and Appreciative of what you got. And at the end of the day, the only thing that will matter are the bonds that you create with people. You were saying friendship, yeah. you know, and, and on the root of it family. is family, friends, and, and the Connection. love that you share with other people. Connection. Connection. And heal so your kids do doesn't have to 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 heal from having you as a parent. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You want to raise them based off of like what you've learned, not based off. Exactly. Like, what you've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's one thing of like, okay, well now I know that this is the wrong way to do it. I want to help my child on un like unravel them themselves the right way rather than how I was raised where I was forced to. Exactly. It's like, what do you want yourself as a parent? What do you want yourself as a, what do you want your, your future children to, to be, to date somebody like you or something like that? Look at it from that perspective. And if yeah. the answer is no, then change your behavior. Yeah. The answer is yes. You know, keep doing what you're doing. I agree. And let kids teach you. Mm. 
Be open you know? to learning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, you let them be exactly who they are and learn to hold space. Because know? they're constantly learning things too that you're not familiar with. Because again, we only know what we've learned and we're kind of, sometimes we're ignorant to not accepting new things because we didn't, we don't know about it. We never heard about it until someone finally achieves that. So when a child, they're so innocent, they're pure, they don't really know anything. They're just, hey, they try to talk to you and teach you something. It's, it is important to like, hey, maybe this is a lesson instead of me now challenging like, no, wrong. It's like, oh, maybe there is something to that. And they're also more connected to source. You know, up, up until they're seven years old, they're completely open to what's behind the mm -hmm. veil. So, you know, from one to, like from zero to seven, kids are like in between worlds, like in yeah. between this one and the other one. And they're not, I don't want to say, they're not tainted by like past experiences because there is nothing else. They're, they're not biased. Exactly. They have nothing. They're not they're, conditioned. They're not conditioned. They're not conditioned. Great word. Um, and so it's great to kind of absorb that and take that in, you know? Yeah. Santa Claus is real. And by the play. Way. <laughs> yeah. So you seven year olds, Santa Claus is still real. Don't listen exactly. to anyone. Don't listen to anyone that says they're not. <laughs> Don't listen they to are. those fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, you know, we're at a point where we have a section. Chris, you want to? Deliberate it. It's time to break up. Oh, oh, we're closing off. That's right. Oh, so yeah. yes, it is time to break up. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's know. okay. It's not working out. It's, it's, not, it's not compatible, you know? <laughs> it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. I'll process. take it. So no, when we, uh, before that, we always like uh, asking the customer, pretty much like uh, the customer. Customer. Here, like my job is driving crazy, yo. Yeah. We <laughs> ask the guest. The guest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, pretty much uh, a lesson that you want people to live by or maybe something that you live uh, that, uh, that, that you learned that's very impactful and at the same time you can also um, sell yourself you know who you are what you do and if you're you know interested on helping more people maybe taking on more clients this is your, your time to shine Always yes. yours. so you can say it to us you can say it to the camera most people just tell the us over there? yeah you can say it to hey us. baby <laughs> 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 um, so I think my final my final line would be just, you know, slow down, get to know yourself and uh, appreciate the, the moments, appreciate the beauty, the beauty of life, the beauty of being present and uh, don't take life so seriously, you know, just enjoy and do more of the things that make you happy, build a life that you're proud of, build a life that you're, that you love so you're not um, relying on other people to make you happy so they can add to that happiness that will be it if you want some spiritual coaching if you want some sound healing some real estate advice investment hit me up my instagram is remedy the soul i'll be happy to help you and support you on your journey let's go let's go yes. oh and before we sign off always remember the juice is in the journey it juices in the journey. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank Alba, you remedy the soul. Thank you for coming on and dropping some knowledge. So Appreciate before we it. sign off, eh, like, subscribe, you know what to do. With that being said, we love y'all. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Ciao. Sayonara.